I recently had a tiny health gut test done and I wanna share the results with you. And you might be thinking, oh, I have had a GI map or a stool sample done with my GI doctor or in the hospital. I don't need that too. And I want to tell you why they're different and a few benefits of a tiny health test. So the first benefit is it's way cheaper than some of those other tests on the market. They use something called shotgun metagenomics, and it gives you this really broad, but really specific and accurate picture of your gut. It doesn't just probe for certain microbes or um, unbeneficial bacteria. They wanna see a full picture. So every single um, DNA that they see in there, whether it's from a fungi, a bacteria, they can detect some parasites. Um, but not only that, but the byproducts of those things. So what are the toxins that they're putting off? Are there short chain fatty acids in the gut and how much? Because those are protective against the gut lining. Unlike some of these other tests like a GI map, which uses something called a PCR technology, and it is accurate, but it's a very narrow focus of certain things in the gut. They can only look at what they're probing for, not a broad picture, if that makes sense. So they basically have different assays of things they're looking for. So maybe E. coli or Klebsiella. And if they detect those in the gut, they can um, amplify those to see kind of how much, but it's not a picture of exactly how much. It'll just say it's high or low, but does that mean it's 0.1% of your gut microbiome or is it 10% of your gut microbiome? And what you do with those results, it's gonna matter that percentage. So in my specific tiny health test, I had a couple of unfriendly bacteria that were too large because we do want a certain amount of unfriendly bacteria in our gut. It, it's they're commensal, they all work together, but if, if an unfriendly bacteria gets too high or if a pathogen, pathogen gets too high, that's when we can start to see GI symptoms, disease states, um, or just any symptoms coming from that. So that's why I love the Tiny Health Test. It's less than $200. I do have a link that'll save you 20. I started using um, these tests on my children and as I'm seeing their results and seeing Brooks improve from like high levels of um, an unfriendly bacteria and a parasite to us getting that fixed, I was like, I wanna do this for myself. I have rheumatoid arthritis. I just wanna make sure everything is good to go, especially being postpartum and just wanting to make sure that my gut health is in check because so much happens in our gut. 70% of our immune system, 70, 80% of our immune system lives in our gut. Our um, propensity for like anxiety, depression, that can start in the gut because we have this gut brain axis. I'm not saying if your gut health is in order that you'll have no other kind of symptoms, but like our skin is a window to our gut. If you're having things like eczema or psoriasis or rosacea, those all have a link to the gut. So who wouldn't want more information about their gut? Um, that's why I chose Tiny Health. So they send you a box and it has this little sample in it here. It just looks like kind of a long, um, almost like a nasal swab, like if you've done a COVID test. So you pull it out, you swab it on a piece of toilet paper after you have gone to the bathroom, or if you're doing this on your baby on a dirty diaper, you put it back in the thing and you mail it off. Super easy. Then you go online, you scan the code that they give you, makes it super simple. Scan the code that they give you and you're gonna fill out tons of things. It's You're gonna tell them any kind of symptom you're having and then they're going to like mesh that together with your results and they're gonna to put together an action plan for you. It is going to be specific things for your test results. It's gonna be exactly which probiotic if you need one, not everyone does, um, say you're low in certain things, it will give you recommendations on how to improve that with both supplement and food, if there's an option for both. But then they will also give you environmental things. So cleaning up your cleaning products, getting rid of toxins in your house, which you know I'm already a huge proponent of that. Um, getting around more animals, especially if you're low in acromancia. So I just love that it walks you through each step. You don't have to be an expert to follow the action plan. Um, you don't have to be an expert to understand it all, but they do have experts that you can hire or I can help walk you through those results as well. I 
Gut microbiome breakdown is 51% beneficial, 15% is variable, 1% is unfriendly, and 32% is unknown. So it's a pretty common breakdown. I have a rare gut type that is not dominated by any one microbe. My key insights show that I have six things that need support, three things that are okay, and eight things that had great results. So not bad. They gave me four top actions to work on, but then there are 37 other actions that I can look at to improve my gut health. If you have questions about getting your own tiny health test, please don't hesitate to reach out. So I have two opportunistic pathogens that are at levels that they do not want to see them at. It doesn't mean I have an infection with those. It just means that I can have some dysbiosis and dysbiosis means you have the wrong bacteria or at the wrong level or at the wrong location. The two that are too high for me are Enterococcus faecalis and Clostridium difficile, which if you've worked in the hospital, you know what C. diff is. So I don't have an infection with those, but it can cause inflammation if those are too high. And it also means I have a disruption in my gut microbiome that allowed those to overpopulate in my gut. So in addition to lowering those, I need to improve other things so that it will like choke out those bad ones from becoming overabundant. So they recommended to do some oregano and cinnamon oil that can help decrease those bad bacteria, but a very short dose of that, seven to 10 days. I went to Cancun in the middle and I didn't take it with me, so I'm gonna continue to do, to do it now that I'm home. My results show that I am low in butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid that is produced by certain microbes in the gut. And things like being very stressed and drinking alcohol can reduce your butyrate production and your butyrate can decrease inflammation and help protect, protect your gut lining. So it's really important that we have enough short chain fatty acids in the gut. And that also shows us that we have the right microbes that are producing that butyrate. So they gave me two recommendations, a pill or a liquid form of butyrate. I got the liquid form. I started taking it yesterday. I still need to take it today. So that's something else in my action plan that I could immediately implement. And it showed that I had lower than normal levels of bifidobacterium, which is really not surprising to me because both my kids had lower levels and they were born from me vaginally. So I'm the one seeding them. And then we are also all on the same diet. So I am making sure my probiotic has a good level of bifidobacterium. And also I started an HMO supplement, which means it's a human milk oligosaccharide prebiotic that I can just add to my daily immune support drink that I'm drinking anyway. And the HMO is a type of oligosaccharide that will help feed the bifidobacterium so that it can take up root in my gut and not just be transient through my gut. Some probiotics that we take kind of just give a high five through the gut as they're on their way out and they don't actually colonize, but bifidobacterium, we actually want it to colonize. And I just heard the founder of Tiny Health talking on a call about it took her almost nine months to get her bifidobacterium levels to an appropriate level in her gut to actually show up on the test at the levels that they wanted. So I'm gonna be doing this pretty consistently with the HMO and the bifidobacterium and one other probiotic, which I'll tell you about in just a second to see if I can get those bifidobacterium levels up. The last thing I'll tell you is my acromancia is low and acromancia just supports a healthy metabolism and a strong gut lining. And both the kids were also low in acromancia. So you can see a trend here. So um, they don't make kid acromancia probiotics because you can't open them up. They have to be encapsulated. Um, so I am starting one, but there are so many food and environment related things that I'm going to be doing as well. Trying to use different spices in my cooking because using a good variety of spices and a good amount of them can really help to kind of starve out the non-beneficial bacteria in the gut. Making sure I'm eating enough foods with inulin, making sure I'm eating enough polyphenol rich foods, making sure I'm eating enough foods with resistant starch, and they go through what those foods are on each page. So when I'm making my grocery list or when I'm at the grocery store, I just wanna be more cognizant of putting those different foods in my cart because we need to eat a wide variety. It's not as much about the volume, it's more about the variety. So if you can just eat something that you don't normally eat, like, like when I was in Cancun, there was this huge buffet and there were fruits and vegetables that I don't have access to here or that I don't get very often. And I was like, oh, just a little bite of each 
will be go so good for my gut. Hopefully it will balance out the amount of drinking that we did for a bachelorette party. But that's neither here nor there. Making sure that we are exposed to animals on a regular basis. So we have a dog, but maybe going to petting zoos or just being exposed to different types of animals is really great for the gut. So you can see it's really detailed. It might feel a little bit overwhelming for you as you hear me talk about all this, but I promise when you're looking through the action plan, it tells you exactly what to do in each section. It's links to things that products that they recommend that are non-biased. And it really is the most comprehensive test on the market and the best test for babies. So. This is the first test on the market that has reference ranges for different age groups because a baby's gut microbiome might show tons of non-beneficial bacteria at a certain range if we're looking at an adult reference range, but for a baby, that's just fine. So making sure that you put your correct age in when you're doing this so that they can use the correct reference range, whether it's baby, child, teenager, adult, pregnancy and even vaginal microbiome. So save $20 using my link. I'll put it below um, or you can send me a message, Tiny Health, and I'll send that to you. But I am over the moon with the results that me and my family have gotten and it just gives me such clear data um, and confidence moving forward that I'm not just picking random supplements and guessing. I know exactly what's going on in my gut and for a pretty affordable price. So let me know how I can help. Happy testing.